<laughs> Let's just go for it, boys and girls. First off, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that just saw the title of the video or the thumbnail and went right for the comment sections and said, you're an idiot, blah, 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 the, what about this or that or the other? This is actually going to be a comprehensive discussion on Reb Dots on pistols. And I think it's important that we do that because so much of today's world is run by identity politics as well as, uh, you know, this person said that one thing that I don't agree with, so therefore they're my enemy. And it doesn't have to be that way. But obviously I fall on the opponent side of Red Dots on Pistols. But I think it's also important whenever formulating a full, well-thought-out, well-researched opinion on something that you give both the benefits and consequences. So whenever we talk about something that is movement size, as in the entire community moving in a particular direction, like Red Dots on Pistols, uh, which is absolutely a movement that is here to stay. But whenever we talk about something that's on that sort of scale, I think it's important to segregate the pros and cons by individual level and then cultural level. And I think we can do that for both the pros and cons. And we're going to start with our sponsorship slot, which is Safe Life Defense. If you guys haven't heard of Safe Life Defense, I'm not entirely sure which rock you've been living under. But for anybody who doesn't know, we've featured multiple of their products here on the channel before, namely their flexible rifle armor system and their tactical belts. I'll have links to those videos in the description box down below. But Safe Life Defense is a provider of high quality armor solutions for everyone. So you don't have to be a super high speed guy with red dots and crap all over their pistols to have access to high quality equipment. They offer both hard and soft armor solutions as well as a variety of other out of the box solutions for different product lines. Now, Safe Life runs a lot of sales, so I'm sure that you guys will see them all over the place. But if you guys are interested, VSO has a code for their subscribers. I'll have it listed in the description box down below to get you guys an extra 10% off of any of your purchase over at Safe Life Defense. And if you use my affiliate link, also listed in the description box down below, then a kickback comes back to the VSO Gun Channel and it helps to support our day-to-day -day activities here. I greatly appreciate you guys who use those codes religiously. And again, it's a product that I personally stand behind. Not literally. Like, that's a really bad thing to do on the internet. This is Curtis's friend, Sarah, and she's gonna be helping us out with body armor testing today. And of course you can find more information over at their website. So the first benefit is simplification. A lot of people will say that a red dot site is simpler to use or is simplified compared to a notch and post site. And I would submit to you that yes, that is absolutely true. However, it's an optical illusion. And by an optical illusion, what I mean is it's actually exactly the same as, say, for instance, a peep sight that you would use on like an AR-15 or something like that. You put your eye up to the peep and there's a post out in front. The difference is that we've just flipped that thing back around. So we have the aperture, which is the screen on the sight, and then the post would be the emitter in the back. Those things still operate in a straight line, just like the notch and the post. Now, the limitations of that we'll get when we go over to the cons of using a red dot sight. Find the dot, put it on the target, squeeze. Feeding off that simplification, fast acquisition. Fewer things in three-dimensional space because all that has been filtered out for you. You basically see the dot and you can say, as well, as long as that thing's lined up, bang, I can shoot. Going to number three, the hit window is wider. So to be able to demonstrate this, I'm gonna to have to point the gun pretty much right at the camera. Disclaimer, nobody's standing behind the camera. I'm in this room by myself. So I'm gonna first present the gun true, which is dot in the center of the screen. And then I'm going to drift that dot to the perimeter. True presentation. And now I'm going to drift and you can see how much that drifts the gun. Now to fix that, I can still make a hit here, but for that to happen, I then move the gun back over. So I know that this is getting compounded, but it filters out error in that if you're off ever so slightly, it gives you an indication that you are off ever so slightly, even though you're within the hit margin. If you're completely off, then the dot disappears off the screen and you have to fish around and find it. 
a positive thing for somebody who hasn't mastered that holster to trigger finger side of the equation. It takes all of this error out of the situation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I think that's it for individual benefits as far as user experience is concerned. I'm sure that there are a few that I left out. I think that we got the majority of them. Let's move on to cultural benefits. And the first one that I think a lot of people, uh, when I made my post on Instagram, really hopped on me for was trickle down weaponomics. The benefit of moving it down the from the military grade down to law enforcement, down to, to the average everyday Joe, is that it progresses the Second Amendment. And that should never be discounted in that Second Amendment principles are proliferated by having as many people with red dots on their pistols, it becomes normal for that to be a thing. And that's not a bad thing whatsoever. Along with that, it raises the bar in the market. So for instance, this pistol right here never would have happened if people didn't demand that it have an optics cut. We're building more and more modularity into the products that are on the market, and I think that that's a good thing. Along sort of those same lines, the technology advances a couple years ago. The RMR had some issues with contact and the battery rattling loose. And basically how the whole thing happens is the bottom of the battery compartment is the top of the pistol. And that was solved with the RMR Type 2. And now that has become kind of a standard thing that happens on all your ruggedized miniature style optics for pistols. That same technology has transferred over to rifle optics. Not really a good example because this part doesn't move, but you're telling me that this isn't a good test of a red dot? <sighs> Time to piss a whole bunch of people off. My doctor tells me not to chew ice individual negative impacts on shooting. And I think that really I'm gonna go ahead and go with just, I'm just gonna go for the kill on this one. It reinforces a false aptitude. When you take a red dot and you throw it on a pistol, it it's good that it takes all of this holster to, to presentation and then side alignment sight picture. It's good that it takes all that out. But because the individual is no longer doing this, it negatively impacts their overall aptitude as far as being able to pick up a gun and shoot it. So you need to look no further than this. If you take a dude who's shot a whole bunch of red dots on pistols and not a whole lot of iron sights and give him an iron sighted pistol, his hit percentage will go through the floor because he is not established, he or she has not established excellent fundamentals inherent to using iron sights. Flip that equation and hand a dude who is awesome with iron sights, a red dotted pistol. And once he gets over the height present and presentation issues with a red dot, he will laser everything because he has gotten all of this, the handsiness worked out of his system because he's used to having to deal with the optic not filtering out all that error that we talked about previously. Along those same lines, I would say that it marginalizes secondary forms of training, like dry fire practice, for instance. If somebody goes to the range with their red dotted pistol and their hit percentage is 99%, a lot of guys will be like, well, you know, I've got some reinforcement that I'm freaking awesome and I don't really need to do anything else. So they may neglect dry fire practice when they go home. They may neglect those holster draws. They're getting feedback that everything that they are doing is right and therefore there's nothing for them to improve upon. At least that's a very narrow-minded sense of self. But we know that it does absolutely happen. I see it all the time, especially with industry people. Uh, I When I made that post on Instagram, there were several people that I know personally and professionally who are instructors that are like, yeah, dude, you're wrong. And I would say, okay, well, tell me you as an instructor, which I will absolutely defer to because I don't have the patience to train a whole bunch of people. I've trained hundreds of people. They have trained thousands of people. You can't tell me as an instructor that you don't spend an inordinate amount of time dealing with holster to sights and then also the whole grip and all that sort of stuff with students across the board. 
And I suppose it really what it comes down to is if you would prefer the student to be unconsciously incompetent when it comes to the things that they're doing with the gun and three dimensions and grip and, you know, all that sort of stuff, as well as how they get it there. If you'd rather them do that, then you're the instructor. It's your prerogative. I'm just saying that when I've seen pistols with red dots on it, a lot of times you take that red dot away from somebody and they're all over the place because they no longer have feedback that tells them their fundamentals suck. Now, while we're here, I mentioned earlier in the benefits section that there's a limitation to using the red dot on a pistol. And that is that you trade those benefits that we talked about for the ability to hit really anything at any type of range. Hello. Just like we talked about the error being taken out of the gun like this, because if it comes off of the screen, then it's wrong. Same thing happens when you start to elevate the bore of the gun. Eventually, you reach a point where that dot disappears and you can no longer sight. If your idea of hitting something at distance is to pick a point above the target and sight the gun there, that is wrong. That is super irresponsible. And if anybody is out there teaching that sort of thing, it's not okay. And this is really hard to describe because I think in mathematics, the closest way that I can state this is if anybody's ever played Gears of War, the grenade arc that shows up on screen, it's a really, really good representation. If you haven't played that, when I think about the sighting picture and I'm making a shot at distance, that's what I think of. I think of how can I draw that arc to a particular place where that bullet will then land on the target versus picking a point and, and, and moving it. So I play with the sight to change that arc. So my perception of the sight changes. There's always a reference point on the sight on the target. It's never, hey, let's aim up there. It's not linear, and that's why it's dangerous to pick a point and shoot it. It's not just, if you're 20 inches low on the target, you don't just move the gun up 20 inches. That doesn't work. You can hit that target by going like this. It's gonna take you a lot of tries, but it'll go up and come back down, and you can get it right. It's really irresponsible to do that. But you can also just shift that arc in three-dimensional space, and you can't really do that with a red dot sight, you can do that with iron sights. If you don't plan on shooting your pistol at any range other than 21 feet, it's not applicable to you. Now, I could probably nuance this to death and can continue to nitpick small things, but I would say that it would be more productive to go to cultural impacts. I would say that people that use red dots on pistols because they get that continuous positive feedback that they aren't screwing anything up, they are much less likely, if they get nothing but positive feedback on the target, standing in a static position, shooting the same target over and over and over and over again, they are much less likely to go attend real-world firearms training to advance that aptitude because they don't think that they need it. And I don't think that's a good thing. If I could distill that down to something easy, I would say that the red dot on the pistol, while in the hands of somebody who is well-trained and has established aptitude can push you to higher bounds on your individual aptitude level, I think that what the red dot on the pistol is actually used for these days is a crutch. And I think that it makes you a poor, which sounds counterproductive because it costs more money to put a red dot on a gun than it doesn't. Being a poor is not being poor. There's a big difference between poor mentality and, and being financially unstable. There's a big difference there. And a poor will say it's just as good or will do something that they believe will buy them aptitude. And that's really what I'm talking about here. Most of the time, a red dot on a pistol is used as a crutch to achieve aptitude that otherwise could not be obtained. And it's like instant mashed potatoes. 
if you've never had real mashed potatoes and all you've ever eaten in your entire life is mashed potatoes out of a box, if your grandmother never did you that service and made you some good old fashioned, like they started life as a potato that, you know, a few hours ago and now they're actually really, really good mashed potatoes. If you think that they're equivalent, then I'm not really talking to you because it's just as good. Do I think that this particular optics cut is correct? No, but I digress. I think that there's a particular way to do it, and this one may or may not be for you. 